Hello everyone and welcome to TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as the Empire of Japan. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, of course, and I'll be honest here, I have no idea how to play as Japan. I've never played as Japan in TNO before, but we're here to learn. Right now, I think I already cut military spending, we've got civilian spending, but let's begin doing a focus. We have the 1962 Fiscal Report and Nasty Quarrel. I know things are going to get a little crazy in Japan. I don't know what's going to happen too much, so let's see what happens. Show the public. Financial Analysis. And report to the Empire. Let's go with financial analysis, just because it gives us more stability. How is our economy doing? Probably fine, but we cannot rely on our subjective feelings for such important matters. We need cold, hard numbers to base our decisions on, even if they just confirm what we already know. Economists, statisticians, uh, and other experts will author a comprehensive report on the true economic situation of the Empire. And this report shall serve as a basis for our future policy. So, the reason why I don't show you like the beginning of the game, where I like select the nation and then we get into the game that way, is because I ha just wanted to f throw all the ships into one big old fleet, so this way we can lose all the fu lose all the fuel so we can reorganize the fleet, probably a little bit easier, and just it helps get us moving a little bit further, but the Eno-Nixon negotiations. The scene is a nondescript office in Kantai. It is four in the morning and everyone is asleep except for Prime Minister Hiroya Eno and Japanese Provisional Ambassador to the United States, Tanzan Ishibashi. The two men have been in the office for 72 hours as of present, following the emergency radar contacts detected off Hawaii three days ago. Families all across Japan and the U.S. are glued to the seats. Those who aren't are already in their nuclear bunkers and hideouts. It was deemed so until the telephone rang. It could only mean one thing. The first ring echoes. Then the second. In the silence, the heartbeats of both men are clearly audible. The third. Follow the protocol. Ishibashi. Follow the protocol. The fourth. Ishibashi picks up the phone. Hello, Ambassador. It's President Richard Nixon on the line. We need to talk. At present, two carrier groups are staring at each other down. 40 kilometers east of Oahu. One wrong move, one provoked reaction, and it's the end of the world. Deep beneath the waves are nuclear submarines, the pinnacle of nuclear technology, able to end the entirety of Osaka or San Francisco in a single salvo. It's darkly humorous how the fate of the world hangs in the balance through the action of two men, one of which is on the verge of collapsing after a three-day run of uneasing, unceasing work. In his styled, or stilted, and weary English, Tanzan Ishibashi said the words that would change the course of history forever. President Nixon, the Dai Nihon Taikoku, is willing to negotiate its position for the sake of the f f our future and yours. We are spared for now. Oh boy, look at that debt. Oh, oh, that hurts. But a nasty little quarrel. Colonel Onishi threw his bottle to the ground and lazily raised his fist. He had been he had beer stains down his uniform, and his medals were oiled in a particularly potent alcoholic brew. In a slurred speech, the colonel insulted the salary man outside of the dirty late night bar with all the energy he could muster before hurling himself at him. The salary man was thrown to the ground, hitting his head against a brick red brick wall, and wailed a cry of pain. He scurried on the ground to gather his balance until he was kicked by the colonel in the back, squirming over more in agony. Onishi struck the salaryman over and over, pummeling him with a drunken fury in the darkness of the night. The salaryman's screams echoed over the buzz of dim streetlights throughout the darkened streets, only quieted by the occasional blow to the face or jab at his stomach. He wailed for help, but this only angered the colonel further as he was beaten and thrown about the back alleys in the darkness of the night. The colonel ga grasped a handful of the salaryman's hair and dragged him from the alley to the middle of the street, stumbling to teach him a lesson. He raised his hand to slap the now sobering and beaten man until a siren approached from further down the road. The police had arrived, and they leapt out of the cars to stop the fighting and arrests. Both of the men. The salary man clung under the police with sheer terror in his eyes, snot and tears mixed with blood dripping from his broken face. The colonel heckled and roared at the officers resisting arrest and spitting at the salary man from a distance. Both were stuffed into a police van and driven to the nearest station, tired and shaking from the scuffle just moments ago. Quite the scene. Quite the scene. But happy 1962, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. It's going to get very interesting with Eno's speech. <coughs> Excuse me. The air was heavy with tension and crackling static. Across Japan's vast urban sprawls, Manchuria's great industrial centers, all the way to the Agarian villages in southern China. Over a hundred million radios and TVs crackled to life. In the offices of Guangdong, large screens and loudspeakers buzzed as the crystal line no notes of Kimigayo washed over all of the co-prosperity sphere. A calm voice announced in a dozen languages simultaneously that a speech from His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Japan, would replace regular programming for the day. Those fortunate enough to have a screen in front of them watched as the last notes of the Imperial Anthem faded away and the red-white logo of the Co-Prosperity Sphere was replaced by the Prime Minister's office. Hiroya Ino, probably or arguably one of the most powerful men in the whole world, sat behind a large and uncluttered desk in his ordered and suitable magniloquent office. The Prime Minister had a most uncharacteristic expression of relief, mouth curved in a smile, uh, in a small, dignified smile, I should say. Over a billion people held their breath as he began to speak in the measured tone befitting his office. People of Japan, honored allies, citizens, and subjects of a great Asian family, I come to you bearing news of a great victory. Not the only, not the one we were used to, but one of the marching soldiers and rolling tanks, but no less a, a victory, a victory of peace. The Prime Minister pauses for a second. As of yesterday, 
An official agreement exists binding the co-prosperity sphere and the Organization of Free Nations to the mutual respect of the, of the marine boundaries and security interests. The specter of nuclear war that has hung over us all in the past few weeks is dispelled. The Prime Minister keep, kept talking, but few listened after the roar. After that, roars of jubilation, silent thanks, and the myriad sounds of a billion lives returning to the normal rhythm after weeks of panic and uncertainty drowned out the Prime Minister's eloquium. For a brief moment, all of East Asia truly came together in a celebration, and America w with them as President Nixon made a speech mirroring his Japanese counterpart. Of course, not all were happy. Some had wished for a war, some had pushed for a war, and some were some of the notion of ascending Japan negotiating with a moribund new United States rankled deeply. Doubtlessly, such feelings find an echo on the other side of the Pacific as well, but for now, peace has prevailed. Is this tr a true Tenazan? And another event as I take a sip of water. The next morning, the jail cells in the police station were tired and bare. The cellar man and the colonel were locked in adjacent chambers. The clacking of typewriters, chatter of policemen, and shuffling of feet were audible to the dark cells, all presumably coming out of the offices above. The report printed out slowly before being shared about by the police officers, sounding like the now comfortably familiar office environment he was so used to and now missed more than ever. Soon after, the keys jingled down the hallway and the noise bounced throughout the jail cells and the men leapt from the floor. Pain in his bruised face gnawed at his weak patience, but the thought of freedom so soon had calmed him. The immediately heavy footsteps of the guards marched down the stone corridor to the jail cells in which both men had been kept in overnight. The salaryman, convinced of his innocence, stood by his cell door, awaiting his liberation. As the guards stopped and the keys jingled once more, a tinge sprung over him. Keys chewed through the lock and a metal door swung open. But it was not the salary man. The guard saluted the colonel and apologized for his inconveniences, to which the colonel turned his nose up at and hurried out of the station. The guard locked the cell, walked back up the corridor, each step was quieter and emptier to the salary man. The salary man shrunk in his cell and curled up against the icy stone walls of the prison alone. He wept, throwing off his blood soaked tie and hurling it across the dirty stained jail cell floor. Burying his head in his arms, his wails muffled by sniffles and cries, he s slipped. And to hide from his rotting walls, he was locked away in for what felt like an eternity. Please let me out. Oh boy. Yetaisai Yoku Sankai. Happy New Year, Hataya san. In the first days of Japan, or in the first day of Japan, in the first days of January 1962, after the New Year's recess was over, ha Hayato and his new colleagues now returned to the diet in a chilly midwinter month. The diet building seemed gloomy from a distance, and the grounds were wet with precipitation from the nights before. Hay Hayato's uh, colleagues in the Taisei Yoku Sankai greeted him with relish, displaying great friendliness towards one another. Perhaps this year, Hai Tayo, Hai Tayo, I, I apologize for mispronouncing his name, thought to himself, everything would go smoothly. Are you quite right? Quite so. Prime Minister Hiroya Ino opened the first season of the Diet of the Year, declaring that, his, that this year would be the year of continued prosperity for the Japanese people and that the pan asianist ideology had gone one year closer to its realization. The Yoku Sankai's deputies sat divided. Hayato sat among the conservatives right next to the liberals. Right behind them were the reform bureaucrats and the Kidoites, backbenchers of the party. Everything was doing well. Then the yearly budget. The conservatives proposed to maintain the military and domestic allocations to be at the same level as the previous year. The liberals rose up in contention, demanding a cutback towards the military. In incense, the reform bureaucrats stated that they cannot abandon the principle of the national defense state. Now to the height of the Cold War. The Kidoites raised their hands in 1952. Then they bickered amongst one another, another brawl on the legislative floor. Hayato side, here we go again. Welcome to Japan's House of Cards. Don't forget the thing about the conservative, and I have a cup of, cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. The conservative. I, Ikeda's routine, routine was no different than the salary man's, from the hour that he decided to go into the office to the evening times when he would go off to work. Had he not lived near the Diet Building, no one would have guessed that he was the Minister of Justice, so unremarkable was he. Even less would know that he's practically the political heir to the Eno administration, should the government enter rough times. It seems that the Prime Minister had set him up as a fall guy, but regardless, he's tried to do his best. The sun set on Tokyo, her redding light disappearing off the Yokohama Harbor, while foghorns of ships sounded to signal arrivals and departures. Ikeda locked his office and shared his briefcase with a plum that only came after years of unceased routine. Today was relentless. He talked with judges, police chiefs, and governors from every prefecture of Japan. He admitted that it may be too much to handle serial killing in Nagoya, while at the same time trying to persuade the Japanese high court to see his way, but work was work. He looked forward to dinner with the Satao tonight. Oh over at his house. Japanese politics was not friendly to newcomers. One had to make friends sooner rather than later. Besides, Satao or Satu seemed to be a decent man, a bit sake a Addled in his spare time, but a hard worker despite it. Perhaps if Ikeda were to have his own ministry one day, he could find Sato a place to fit in? No, if. No. When? May the chips fall in his favor. Across the ocean. Across the ocean lies the greatest city of Japan's sovereignty and mastery of the Pacific, the USA. Humbled 17 years ago through our superior command of the oceans, the once indefatigable foe of Pan Asianism slain, uh, lies slain. And our mark on them, the treaty ports of San Francisco and LA, are daily reminders of such. 
The Kampai Tais, a branch of the West Coast, W. Ka Ki Khan, have inserted their proxies well into the confines of American society and offered us an interesting insight into the attitudes of the Americans towards the Japanese. Richard Nixon's Republican Democratic Party was an ideological and practical failure, but they still remain the voice of reason and moderation with American politics. Fam famously, Republican Democratic President Dwight D. Eisenhower broached the peace on the Pacific by illegitimately allowing Hawaii's ascension to the Union several years ago, as well as tearing up the Treaty of San Francisco, though W. Kikan has determined that the Republican Democratic establishment is the lesser of two evils, especially compared to their new main electoral rivals. But far more dangerous is the National Progressive Party, an unholy union of socialist agitators and their southern allies united in the purpose of restoring American hegemony over the Pacific and risking war with the Japanese Empire. While relatively marginal in terms of electoral presence, W. Kai Khan has determined that the NPP could rise to eminence over the next few years. A strong cause for concern, as we have noted, we have to ensure that our rightful territory in Hawaii and the Eastern Pacific is secure. Two sides of the same coin. Hey, that's like the first title I put for uh, the United States of America campaign. Love it. Actually, does Menchu quo quo? No, they do not have unique focus tree. That's kind of sad. That's okay. We've got some manpower going down, but the Admiral, Japan's blood core of politics is a testament to nature, monument, or yeah, to the idea that cunning and crafty will reign. To survive, you must be willing to drop all sense of ideological commitment or dedication to a higher cause, lest the system chews you up and spits you out worse than you ever started. It's a system that, by its very nature, abhors honor. Yet in this land of schemers, puppets, and psychopaths, there remains one man who holds on to his honor. That man is Sokichi Taka. Takagi. A boy of humble upbringings, Takagi grew up with a knowledge of oppression and those who suffered under it. Takagi, even in his darkest moments, never lost his sympathy for those who experienced pain unduly. Takagi entered into a heavy into the Navy prepared to aid a nation that, despite everything he still saw, is great. During his time in the Navy, Takagi played a dangerous game, resisting the government of Hideka Hideki Tojo, all within the bounds of social and political tolerance. He would eventually become a leading figure in the Navy during the Navy's liberalization in the 50s. With the arrival of the burgeoning liberal movement in Japan's mainstream political scene, he would respectfully lead the Navy to take up the mantle of the liberal faction's leader. A man of respect and respected by all for his service, Takagi is seen to maintain his image both to the public and to himself. He is a realist, capable of criticizing others while knowing the boundaries of his own abilities. His mind and body were never meant for politics, as he quickly tires of the constant demands and obstructions of political reform, yet he bears it all anyway. A martyr for a little man, a good soul, and a land of no such thing. Steady as the waves. And we also have a lot of debt. Actually, not bad. 1.85. We could lower it so we can get no debt, but right now we're actually doing not too bad here, so... The Ulan Batar Rebellion. Beyond the home islands and our more prized possessions in Asia. Unrest has reached his head once more in the Mongol steeps. Our ally, Prince Dem Chug Don Grub, had already failed once to keep the Mongols in line in the 50s, and now he seems to have failed again. While we might, we have not yet been compelled to invoke, become involved in the conflict, it seems likely that we will need it once again to support the Prince as Japanese citizens leave what was friendly territory only weeks ago. Yet another uprising. Oh boy. All right around here. Oh, Mongolia. And probably another event. The bureaucrat. Some men say that money makes the world go round. Others say it is the root of all evil. To some men in the Japanese Empire, it is both the ends and means of the, their life's work. Kaya Okin Okinori is such a man. Kaya's political career has been one of the feeding streams of income to an increasingly militarized Japan. In 36, he joined the other Japanese officials in maximizing the profits from Manchukuo, utilizing the mineral, agricultural, and labor wealth of the region to its limit, especially as the empire came into conflict with the Americans in the Great East Asian War. By this point, though, Kaya was a minister of finance and spent many years learning the tools needed to rise in the cutthroat Japanese political system. Most important was knowing what people listened to. Since his tenure as a finance minister, Kai has served in the House of Representatives, making close friends with many of the military representatives, especially the IJA veterans. The Imperial Army has been an excellent tool to enforce its authority in Manchuria, and a well-seasoned man like Kai is perfect for proposing some ideas the civilian government may find controversial. Head of the reform bureaucrats wing of the Yoku Sankai, Kaya's small clique fights for centralization of power above all. Bickering among government branches has only delayed Japanese prosperity. The man does hold true to his ideals and believes in a better, stronger Japan. It is no secret that his ideas are dependent on his friends, many of whom need a respectable man in the imperial diet to achieve their own goals. Whatever the case with these rumors, Kaya Okinori intends to keep the military industrial power of Japan on a tight leash no matter what. Popular support is his bane. What do we have a decision here, huh? Oh, we can conflict in Mongolia. Okay, send equipment. Our expenses will rise. Expand rail networks. How much political power do we get a day? We're all, still in Jap January 17th. It's like 14 minutes into this video. We get one political power a day, so... The Grey Eminence. Kido was a man of many contradictions. A noble, but also deputy, a former prime minister, yet an aspiring power broker, and a Grey Eminence without a lick of touch in politics. Irrelevant. They called him a done with failure. Nobles and deputies alike like to tell him as they mingled within the chambers of the 50s, Kido-san. To hell with the 50s, that was a long time ago. The only thing that could bring Kido's affable, jocular, and jovial temper to a bro boiling simmer was a reminder of the time when he had power, but powerless. Another contradiction. 
He sat in the corner of the House of Representatives lounge, the only deputy dressed in a decent suit, who conducted himself with decent etiquette. Were he to sit in the noble's lounge, he would be laughed out of the room because of his loose cravat and padded tie. Keto did not care. When they needed favors, he would come to him. And Keto was not someone so easily offended by a mockery of his mod mode of dress. No noble should be angry at his inferiors nor his equals. Tea, cakes, while others, deputies brought bread and bundled rice. The conservatives, the liberals, and reform bureaucrats talked to their leaders freely. Ketoites, even avid ones, avoided Keto. He sat alone, undisturbed. A time will come when they would surround him, for scraps of power left untouched at the heels of his table. They just needed to wait. There's always room for an old bur bird, in which we get next the ideologue. I don't like this debt. Oh, it went back up. Oh, well, crap. The ideologue in the suburbs near the Imperial Palace rested the living spaces and homes of the Kazoku, Japan's nobility and the Emperor's Kim. When Emperor Maiji moved his court to the Tokyo, all of them followed from low to high by the heels of his palanquin. A layer of dew covered the courtyards, foot, roo rooftops, and eaves of this place. Thickets of leafless trees rustled whenever a stray ble breeze blew between their naked forms, as if trembling from the cold of Japanese late winter. The Kon Kono residence was here, stately but not immodest. Japanese style but not ancient. Hence a verdant verdant grass-covered patches here and there, the sign of a budding spring. A hush fell over Fuminmaro Konu's house. He preferred anything to be as quiet as possible in his house. His wife was in the attic, searching for old articles of clothing that they could give to the neighbor's son. He took the tea in a city whose sliding door are embossed with the symbol of the Kono house, highest of all regions of the emperor, or once. Dressed in his yukata, he sat cross-legged a crass gesture against noble etiquette. In front of him were the treaties from the outside world, from outside Japan, as had always been the case since his youth, American diplomacy fascinated him. These days, everything was quiet. For 20 years since his ministry, Japan had managed to carry on, stabilizing its newfound empire against Western imperialism. He did not contact the Yoku Sankai much nowadays. One did not intentionally seek out one's own failures. It had been years since he had seen the emperor, who he tried to dissuade from a war with America. Since then, his imperial majesty had not called on him. When he did, Fumimaro Kono would be ready to answer that call. A country is never too big for one's mad ideas. No, it's not. And Akira Kurosawa reaches Sanjuro. One of Japan's most eminent filmmakers, Akira Kurosawa, has re released his most recent opus, the Jid Aigeki film called Sanjuro. And a sequel to Yojimbo, released from the previous year, Sanjuro stars Kurosawa's frequent collaborator Toshiro Mifune, and based off Shuk Shugoro Yamamoto's short story Haibi Hai An. Critics have appreciated the thematic shift from Yojimbo as Sanjuro is now set in a fortress in town instead of a far-flung backwater, which many have panned for being too Western influenced. Rumors following the production of Yojimbo include Kurosawa being threatened by the Toko and figures close to the military, but there has not been any concrete proof of such. By far and wide, critics have lauded the film, with many praising the perfectly synergized mix of comedy, action, and adventure. On the technical end, many have also praised the cinematography of the film, revolutionary for the time, as well as Mifune's incredible performance. The film has also outsold Yojimbo in Japanese theaters, another milestone broken by Kurosawa. Rumor has it that Kurosawa has already begun production in his next film, entitled Akahigi. <clears throat> Akahigi. While he has confirmed that being inspired by another of Shu Shugoro Yamamoto's short stories, <clears throat> And rumors that he's considered Fyodor Dostoevsky's work as another source of inspiration is, are still unfound. Japanese culture is entering its golden age. Cool. I wonder what would happen if I did not do anything here. I want to help out. Like, I want to intervene. See... Oh, yeah, I definitely want to intervene, so let's do that. So, the Shadow Shogun. And the sh so sun shone brightly. A Niigata Central Station, the transportation hub of the prefecture. The main comet for thousands of citizens in today... <clears throat> The hosting grounds of representatives of, of for Niigata's third district, Kakui Tanaka's speech. Flanked by local police, Tanaka was speaking to a sea of rural Japanese today, his constituents, his roots, and most importantly, his people. Amongst the sea were signs showing support for the stout representative. The Niigata Mountain Citizens Association backs Tanaka Kakui. A very good morning to you, lovely citizens of Niigata. I've come with brilliant news for our beloved province. Uh, Tanaka boomed... Uh, <clears throat> in his distinctly rural accent, his speech drowned by the applause of the crowd. Many of you shared your concerns with me. Oh, Tanaka-san, the Hakushin line is overflowing. We can't get to Sendai or Toyamo or Toyama without cramming ourselves in. I hear you, my people. I hear you loud and clear, and I made sure these those arrogant bureaucrats in Tokyo hear your voices, too. The Hakushin line was the only train line traversing through Niigata province. Niigata in 62 was still very much a rural province, dominated by agriculture and those economic characteristics that had played very much in Tanaka's favor. Tanaka had always championed himself as the man of the people, one who rose from the ranks and broke the t Tokyo bureaucratic bubble, and to this day retained the confidence of his constituents through generous construction and development projects. So today, fellow citizens of Niigata, I present to you the foundations of the Jotsu 
Shinkansen line. Cameras flashes and applause drowned out the ending of Tanaka's speech as a ceremonial ribbon was cut. Tanaka himself was silent during the affair and broke the first ground as leader should. He did not need any more words to justify or explain himself. He let the results of his labor speak for himself and for the, his constituents. Never step too far behind. Very cool. Now time for a sip of coffee. Hmm. Not bad. Showa no Yokai. Yes, a shipment of 1,570 units of logs is delayed. If your excellency could excuse me, I'm running several major shipping organizations right now, or operations. The shipment to Rojun, Ryujun, must be delayed for fears of complications. Pharaoh Prince Tak Takeda, I will receive you once again shortly. Kishi no Busuki hung up the telephone and let out a deep sigh before pouring himself a glass of wine. Domain Christoph... Uh, Chatelon Province, 1954 Vintage. It's just business, Kishi thought to himself as he flipped open the ledger. Plain and simple, the ledger had become famous for being the devil's handbook and among Kishi's subordinates, opponents, and sometimes allies. Procurement, 1570 units of log logs. A Chinese settlement 70 kilometers west of Harbin. Get Colonel Takashi to ensure all logs are in workable condition. Shipment 2. Showa Steelworks. Rio Jun Complex. Log to be, to be processed and sent immediately to resource extraction. Legally speaking, a deputy such as Kishi would not have access to such resources, let alone executive capacity over state-owned operations in another sovereign state. However, Manchu Kuo, or Manchu, as Kishi insisted, was his personal point of pride. Who else could have industrialized an uncivilized back savage backwater in such a short period of time and even transformed it into the Empire's industrial heartland? Kishi flipped to another section of his ledger, this time with a label, Liabilities and Hazards at the Top. The first page was bathed in red stamps, signifying liability eliminated, almost poetically metaphorical for the sheer bloodshed and exemplified on this page alone. Bureaucrats, officers, politicians, students, Nobody escaped the eye of the devil of Showa. Kishi rang the intercom button at the bottom of his desk. Schedule a meeting with General Akira Muto. Thursday next week at the Tsukibayabashi Jiro. Manchurian connection. Oh boy. I would definitely want to intervene. Because luckily for Japan, Japan starts with some helicopter divisions. And we have four divisions of Marines. We've got nine things of tanks. And one, oh, actually eight things of tanks. Oh no, we have six things of tanks and three things of motorized. And we have... 28 divisions of our infantry, which I actually already converted over to square divisions because they're 16 combat width. Because some of them are. Wow, we just got through that focus. Wow. 12 combat width, so 16 is obviously better. We have Kono Shidan, which is also 12 combat width, which is eh. Let's go ahead and show the public. The hardworking Japanese people have always been the true reason for unparalleled prosperity. It's only fair that they get to see the fruits of their labor. This will surely raise their morale to even higher levels and will also dispel all unfounded rumors about a so-called impending economic crisis. We will have nothing to hide, and the whole world will envy our continued success. Absolutely. The Tsukiyaki. Kiyo Sakamoto has almost overnight become one of the most recognizable figures in Japan, at least his voice has. His new song, Uo Muiti Aruko, I Look Up As I Walk, now plays on radios all across the nation. A whole citizenry enraptured by the smooth timbre of his tone, or his voice, and the gentle sadness of his lyrics. It's a song of lost love, but not a mournful one, and full of regret and hope in equal measure. The song's appeal has not only been constrained by national borders, it was po popularized across the sphere by as part of his... Part of the home ministry's push to spread contemporary Japanese culture among his allies. It even became popular within the U.S. despite the government's hostility to Japanese exports of all kinds. In Anglophone countries, the song was renamed Sukiyaki after the beef hot a pot dish, in an attempt to make the title shorter and more recogni recognizably Japanese. The bright, beautiful, the bright beauty of the song speaks to the people from Tokyo to Washington, reminding them that despite their differences, they all love or know the pain of longing and the pale ache of lost love. Happiness lies beyond the clouds. Intervene. I'm going to intervene. I'm going to get involved. Ooh, let's get this guy because he's not politically connected. And y'all. We can send one thing. Oh, we can send two things. Oh. Okay. If that's the case, I don't want to send, like, tanks up there. Probably sending marines would be okay, actually. I'm going to send... Mm, let's send you. Because you're fighting these guys. We don't like you guys, so... Oh, man. Oh, that's the thing I forgot about. I did not do anything with my Air Force yet. Oh, boy. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to get rid of all these guys then. Why are these five? Good. Anything else? Hopefully not. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I apologize about this. I normally... When I usually do this early on, but we have so much reading at the beginning. Which is fine, but... Goodbye. Alright, let's actually set this up. Let's let time go on a little bit more before we get another event. A little bit. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, go up to 4, that's fine. We've got ballistic missiles, which is fine. Short range. Jetcast. Jetcast. I love Jetcast so much. That oh! 
Hmm. You know, maybe we'll use tactical bombers. You know what? I'm not gonna get rid of them now. How about we use tactical bombers? I almost never use them, and we need the range probably if we get involved in Hawaii. So, you guys do that. That actually. Let everyone do this. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Then again, we can't send it over there, but whatever. So, actually, for all you guys, then train. Screw up, just train. Since we can't send them any planes, since they have no air bases, so. Whatever. Whatever, main gene request support. Status report. 57A, North China Area Army. Truncated for brevity. Forward. Prince Dem Chong Dong Grob's forces of the Mongol United Autonomous Government has been battling the forces of Yum Yagin Sundebai's rebel government and the far seeps of Mongolia. Mongolia, while backwater compared to the riches of Manchuria and China, is still a vital communications and logistics hub for transport through Beijing. As such, the prince, his forces should be aided by the uh, forces of the North China Area Army as much as possible. Colonel Yokohara, who represents our chief of staff, had come up with three proposals. A. The provision of air support from the 17th and 33rd fighter groups, as well as a bomber group from General Kokutai. The lowest possible co commitment we can make, this would mean still mean significantly to the prince's forces. Intelligence reports have stated that the air capabilities of Sun Debai's rebels are lacking. B. Same as option A, but with additional provision of the 33rd Reserve Battalion, as an advisory group for the prince's forces on the ground. This would increase the land capabilities of the main Zhang army, but might be seen as a waste of resources if the prince loses the war in the steep. C. Same as option A. With the added provision of the 2nd Armored Brigade, a heaviest commitment we are able to make, this would increase the prince's chance of victory exponentially, at the cost of massively lost political capital if the prince were to be defeated. Signed, Lieutenant General Ishihara Ta Tadachi, GHQ Outer Mongolia Observatory Group. Ooh, send aid? Lose manpower, lose money? Our national debt will rise. Free some auxiliary air units. Well, we already sent the volunteers, so I'm not really too worried about it, so. Hopefully we do well. As long as we hold the line, that's all that really matters to me. Oh, uh, did you guys make Um, I guess technically we saw forces in there. I'm waiting for the forces to actually get transferred. Over oh, unusual requests. Our Manchurian Council has received a rare community cue from Konstantin Rodzewski, one of our old useful idiots from Harbin. In his capacity as Vaud of the Russians, he demands in a rather bipolar language the return of Blagovenshenek. Shank, a region in the far north of Manchukuo, which contains his hometown of the same name. The region is not particularly impressive in terms of mineral wealth, and it's full of ethnic Russians who, whom we have no reason to displace. The Manchurians expressed their profound indifference to the matter when it was brought to the government, so there's no need to get bothered with them to just rubber stamp it. All other authorities concerned have made it clear that they don't care about a frozen stub of the land full of Russians, and Orodzevsky is offering us rights to the resources in the far eastern Siberia once he secures the region. Though unlikely to happen, it would allow for some interesting investment opportunities should he succeed, so there's nothing like to lose from the seeding the lands in question. He may as well just send the request up the pipeline to the die and see what comes of it. We should hear back in a month or so. I never liked the place anyway. Hmm. Interesting. I just want my forces to arrive. I don't want to go to war, man. A conflict in Mongolia? What is this? Our intervention in the Mongolian rebellions is generally regarded as a minor scale anti insurgency operation. As such, I expected that a few eager volunteer detachments will be sufficient to put a swift end to the Sendai Baz rebels. rebels. However, should we fail to make expectations, we will not only suffer a significant loss of face, but also be forced to launch a full scale invasion in Mongolia. Ooh, what is this? Japanese support, unite the princes. Strengthen cavalry patrols, reconnaissance, send advisory battalions, send equipment. I kind of don't want to do anything about it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Ooh, we get, uh, get more infrastructure, less supply consumption. That'd be, actually probably be really good. Send more volunteers? Well, we could. Oh, we can do it twice. Increase support, intervene. Um, I kind of want to build an airbase. Yeah, I think that'd be really good, cause, since we can send stuff anyways. Alright, so where are my divisions? You guys, already led by some dude. 29 command power. We gonna need people who can attack quickly. Defense? That doesn't really help us. Uh, division recovery. I'll, I'll go with you, because division recovery is usually pretty good. Where are you guys at? You literally just walked over the border. Wow. Alright then. I want to try to save those divisions, so let's see if we can do this. See what happens, though. Society is currently sympathetic tradition. Vladivostok Vral. Recent reports of rioting in villages on the outskirts of Uragio have locked in, new, in from news agencies following the disagreements between southern inhabitants of outer Manchuria and Russian natives. What began as a series of disputes over rights to the land in the region has since escalated into violent outbursts of chaos that now ravage small sections of the countryside and a handful of towns just north of the city. Police are reporting details of revenge killings against southern inhabitants, many of whom are Japanese citizens. Local garrisons have been requested by the outer Manchurian authorities to help control uh, help control in the local po Police commissioner has put out a statement regarding the perpetrators as no better than the anarchists of the North. These comments follow the uncovering of a particularly brutal scene in which elderly veter veterans of the East Asia 
Great East Asia War had been murdered in the street. The recent violence and historic tension between settlers and natives in outer Manchuria can find its origins in issues of social and economic disparity. But local governments insist that the deputies or dis the, 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 I can't speak. I apologize. The disputes are the fault of the mi simple miscommunication gone wrong. However, many are skeptical of these statements and defend them as methods to inoculate the Russians from blame in their own barbarism against the Japanese. Violence has, violence has always been their way. So you guys got up here pretty quickly. Let's go over here. I want. Oh, those guys have been safe. Cut those guys off. There you go. We're getting attacked. We should do it relatively okay, though. And do we send we send infantry in? Which maybe we shouldn't have. Maybe we shouldn't have because these guys just got encircled again. Great. Now by yourself, you should do okay, especially against these pesky folks. Uh, let's make sure that we're making. Uh, what are we making actually? Improved APCs mean better things. I'm not going to use these. I I don't like main infantry fighting vehicles. Jet fighter CV. Jet fighter tactical bombers good. Jet cast. Oh, actually, you know what? Cast is still better just because we put them on. Planes, um, by planes. I mean, we put them, you know, on carriers. So I'll probably do that a little later. Free military factories. Oh, we actually have more military factories. Let's go ahead and put some more tactical bombers. Meh. Motorized. I don't want to put them on, but really get some more here. We need more guns. Man, I should not have sent the infantry. They're taking quite a while. Beat these guys up. That's good. Actually, we can get up here. We can actually cut these guys off, which would be actually really, really good. Uh, if we can get, take out that area, that'd be good. Come back down here so we don't get cut off. So these guys are now cut off, which is awesome. For now, uh, at least. Know your place, countryman. The great crash of a, a slap whipped across Mr. Toru's face. He was held in a dark and dingy room in the garrison barracks in the treaty port of Los Angeles. A Japanese-American, he was beaten and held in IJ and barracks overnight with bruises across his body and searing pains down his back. Half a dozen troops interrogated him in the cell, holding his face to bright buzzing lights and crunching his fingers to tear out answers from his weak and troubled lips. Accusing him of disloyalty and collaborating with the Americans, Mr. Toru's tired body was confused. He was born in California and considered himself an American. How did he owe loyalty to an emperor from across the Pacific? His attempts to explain himself were rejected and met with only with humiliation and punishment. Suddenly, troops flew in the brick cell and dragged Mr. Toru by the arms, dashing him into the streets in the cover of night. He was spread out by the roadside, broken and unresponsive outside the occasional wail of pain. The midnight silence colored him with lonely and painful scars. Treason, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, we were fighting over a river, maybe? No, we weren't. Okay, that's okay. Let's just win here. You guys, pause these guys, because we got to kill these guys off here, and the capital was where? Oh, yeah, we got plenty of time then. Show the public and report to the Empire. Voting the report was no easy task, but it was a necessary step to ensure the continued economic dominance in the Far East now that we've finished it. It's time to release it to the, to the government and find our ways to improve the economy even further. Our situation may be excellent, but we cannot afford to rest on our laurels and leave the initiative to our enemies. Of course not, no. Hey! Minus A! Hey, look at that! Oh man. Oh. Oh. Oh no. I usually like cutting down this, cutting down the debt, because if you put this, if you invest your liquid reserves to increase GDP, it only goes by half, but if you do this, then you can lower that and the debt will not increase nearly as much. Mm, screw it. Debt is but a number. Uh, are we building anything? Like, we're building stuff, right? That's good. If I increase this, that'll really make things go up. I'm going to invest more in construction spending. That doesn't hurt us too much. Not too much. We're going to build a lot. We're not going to have a lot of stuff here, but that's okay. Okay, so that's not looking too bad then. We're going to build as many civilian factories as possible. Of course, we'll build some uh, infrastructure too, but we're going to build, 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 build. We're a nation of builders, but we're out of touch. I love that song. After a local fisherman journeyed into New Zealand's territorial waters in search of a larger catch, he was pulled up from a ship and arrested by the Australian Navy. Beaten and held captive, the authorities detained him for hours against his own will. With his hands tied behind his back, he shrieked in fear as he was pressed against the metal desk of the vessel. The sailors questioned the fisherman, who responded in a broken combination of Kanaka language and English between his whimpering cries. He was not a Japanese spy, the sailors discovered, and in shame, they released him back into northern waters. He was not the first, nor will be the last victim of the bitter maritime rivalry between the powers of the Pacific. He, like many others innocent inhabitants of the Pacific Islands, will suffer at the hands of international disputes they have no connections to. Titans and ants. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, this is really good for us. Yeah, we encircle five enemy divisions. Oh, the Mongolians have played a bad, terrible game, and we don't need to get involved anymore with this decisions and stuff. I'm going to save my political power. Who knows what you, mi you, mi what you might get from it. Come on, go, 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 go. Actually, I'm not going to take a river. Do that one. They're fast enough that they can move. Oh, that is so nice. Olan Batar. Oh, Hey, you know what? Like I said, we got it done. Nice and easy. No problems. If that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and have everyone... Oh, maybe not everyone. Have the infantry train, actually. 
because they need to get better. I don't want to train the tanks because tanks are expensive. And I train the marines too. Beautiful. And I already set up a lot of research stuff here just because I wanted to get through this uh, fairly quickly. Let's grab none of that stuff because that's ahead of time actually. Oh boy. Marines? Let's get some better marines because we will be using marines probably. Equipment? Not bad. Let's grab some better recon because we already are using recon so that would be probably pretty good. And here are the National Spirits. Showa Emperor. Monthly tension gain goes down. More stability and daily political power. Nihon Ascent. War support, offensive war support goes down, but defensive war support goes up. Zaibatsu Question. Alright, not bad. Legacy of the 1960 Guarded Pearl Exercises. War shall reveal the true state of the Japanese military. Let's see. We also have... The Tsushima Tunnel Project. Ooh, we use five civilian projects. Oh, boy. Oh, so it helps connect Japan and Korea together. That's kind of cool, actually. Military austerity. And then we have Advisor Level 1. That is cool. We are the Cold Prosperity Sphere, and we are a leader of the Sphere, in which we have the Japanese government overview GUI. The House of Peers support, and the House of Spears high, 62%. Independents, conservatives, reformists, liberals, and Ketoites. I'll be honest, I have no idea what to do here. I really have no idea. I don't know which, which way we should go. So let me know in the comments below, which way should we go? Kido, Takagi, Miki, Ino, Kaya. Because we're only at April 12th right now in the campaign, because reading... Oh my goodness, what happened? What is this? Increased budget. Oh, crud. Paranoia. What? Encourage in inter-service war games. Oh, no. I don't know. Just let me know what I should do in the comments below. I will gladly read all your comments and figure out what is probably the best course of action. We're making more shifts, it looks like, which is totally fine with me. I'm not really too concerned about this stuff, but let's continue with ensured continued prosperity. While our sphere is harm harmonious and prosperous, it is not perfect. There are ways, always rogue elements funded by the supremacist Germans and the imperialist Americans that seek to disrupt our unity and weak men with little Yamato spirit who fail to contribute to economic progress. We must rectify these wrongs and starting with the economy and how we should guide it. But I think we shall end the episode here, my friends. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will get more debt by increasing our construction spending. But... We shall continue on and see what Japan holds for us. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.